Hey guys, Kevin is my for Astro's Evil Dead Season 1, Episode 4, Brujo. And I was definitely looking forward to this episode after the really awesome um, ending of last week's episode. And of course, the... Um, just, and, and of course, you know, just I, I, the events of what happened last week, I really was interested in seeing what was going to happen here, and this is by far the best episode of the season, I really love this episode, there were so many callbacks to Evil Dead 2, which is always a plus in my book, you guys know how much I love Evil Dead 2, this series already proven itself to be better than Evil Dead 2, but I really love this episode, it was such a fucked up episode, but that's why it worked so well, it was really funny, there were some great reveals this episode, I definitely really loved it, and let's just get into it, because there's a lot actually that happened this episode. In terms of plot development, this is probably the most plot-heavy episode we've had of Astro's Evil Dead yet, which I really loved, I have to say. There were some really funny moments, though, here, definitely. Um, so let's just get into it. So we start right where the last one left off, with Amanda handcuffed in the Books from Beyond bookstore, and of course, I didn't know what was going to happen here. I didn't know if she was going to be killed off, if something bad was going to happen, and this, she's shooting a dead eye, and there's a dead eye right in her face. She manages to drag her gun to her hand, shoots him, but to no avail. And luckily, Ruby, in all her badass glory, shows up. Like I said, Ruby really is a badass. She saves her, and all she says is she's her new best friend, which is awesome. I love Ruby in this episode. She's such an awesome character. And on the road, we see Kelly's laying in the back seat, wakes up with a weird ring in her head, and this is definitely the episode where I think Kelly went from sort of like a dams, not really a damsel on the stress character, but more of just like the emotional core of this episode and the show, and went to more like a full fledged Evil Dead character. Like her after this episode, Kelly's awesome, and a lot of you haven't enjoyed Kelly. I really have been loving Kelly. I think Danny DeLorenzo, um, Danny DeLorenzo has been being doing a very good job, and this episode no exception. She really did a great job here. She pukes out the window of the car says it was just the tiny concussion and you can tell right away that there's just something weird going on with her pablo ash and kelly's continue their road trip and ash hopes that the brujo will be able to help and we get one of those weird evil tracking shots out of the nearby forest it very much felt like the first evil dead especially when the cars are going crazy windows go up the doors locked and ash notices this huge dust cloud racing up behind them it starts sending the car all over so pablo and ash hit the nitrous which i love that ash didn't know what the nitrous did but he used it anyway they speed up gloriously from one, and then the engine looks like it's burning out so they're shit out of luck they pass through the gates of the brujo's property the evil slams into the empty space and dissipates so ash explains that it's pure evil attacking them and again even though ash isn't the smartest guy again he knows what's going on and i love seeing that here so, Amanda and Ruby then talk in the bookstore about Ash, and this scene was awesome with Ruby. I mean, we've been seeing hints of Ruby. She knows what's going on with the book. She knows about Ash. She knows about Kelly. And how does she know all this? Because she's related to the family from that cabin in Evil Dead 2, which I thought was a genius twist. I loved it, and I thought they handled it very, very well here. It's the exact twist that this show needs. She talks about how three years ago in her family's cabin that he, Ash killed her mom, her dad, and her sister, and Annie, obviously, and she's been out for revenge ever since, and of course, we know that he didn't kill them, it was, um, you know, he, they turned into, you know, um, deadites, and that's why they died, so, obviously, she's now hellbent on revenge, and I love that twist, I love that we found out what Ash has done, really is a callback to what Ash has done in the other, you know, in the other uh, movies. I really love seeing that and really shows the, you know, karmas come to get him. I mean, he really didn't have to face that in Army of Darkness because, of course, it was in the past and he didn't have to face all the shit that he did in Evil Dead 2. You know, he didn't have to come face to face with that. But now here's someone who we had no idea was related to them. And now we know why she's so good at fighting. She's probably trained all her life and probably was just not there when her entire family was so that's pretty crazy that we found that out. So the Deadite Bookshop bookstore owner wakes up, looks at Ruby, says, You, and we know who we know who you are. You are, and Ruby cuts his head off. And man and Ruby agree to go get him together. They're gonna go get this motherfucker together. And uh, I thought that was awesome. So at the Brujos, there are all sorts of talismans and craziness. And the Brujo comes out and tells Pablo he's expecting him. And he says, um, two days ago, an ill wind whispered his name, and Pablo tells the Brujo that he thinks Ash is a heffy. And, uh, 
And Ash says, when Elif shows up, it blows up. And the Brujo analyzes Ash and says, the flame is dim, but it flickers. And it's not enough to illuminate what you seek. And Kelly, meanwhile, is drawn to one of the talisman. And she's hearing voices from it. And again, this is just really weird shit's going on with Kelly in this episode. Brujo and Ash head inside to take a look inside of Ash. They want to know what's going on with him. And while Brujo repairs the spell, Ash is very uncomfortable. He's not really sure if this is going to go well. And uh, I love that he's just like, Ash, you're adult. And he's like, is that good? And he says, it's only because you don't know what power you possess. Yeah, Ash is, Ash is pretty stupid, and I like that he said that, but he's actually using it to his advantage because he doesn't know the power that he has, and he says his lack of self-awareness will make it difficult to find the answers he needs, and Ash takes a shot of basically liquid acid, so now you know that Ash is pretty much going to be on an acid trip for the rest of this episode, which is definitely what this felt like. I mean, I don't think they could have made a more convincing acid trip than they did here. This is probably the most convincing acid trip they could have had here, and we'll get into that, but Kelly and Pablo... Um, they have a chat in the RV, and, um, basically, they're talking about building Ash a new hand. They want to build him a new hand, because obviously the other one, he had to take off because of what happened with, um, Amanda, so they're gonna try to build him a new hand. And then we realize that Ruby shows Amanda that she has Ash's demon hand, and he cut off to keep the possession out, and apparently it's been awake all this time, and now it's starting to wake up, which is really batshit crazy, but it really makes sense for this show, honestly. I think it's, I think it's definitely, um pretty funny I have to I think it's definitely pretty funny and especially because of how crazy Evil Dead 2 was it really goes well with this I mean just the fact that the hand is waking up after all this time is pretty funny and if Ash is to face his hand again in this show that's gonna be awesome we all remember how batshit crazy that scene was in uh Evil Dead 2 and that's essentially what most of this episode was I mean remember the scene where the house was laughing supposedly and Ash was laughing with it Everything we get of Ash in this episode after this is pretty much like that. So the Brew continues to try to get Ash to respond. It's starting to worry because he's definitely starting to see things. He's seeing an eyeball in Brujo's mouth, and uh, he then sees images from all of these like topless women with like big tits. He sees Charlie's Angels. He's seeing Playboy. He's seeing I Dream of Genie. All these things, and they're all related to like really hot women. And then the, from the old, and then we see footage from the old classic movies, which is what I loved. I love that we saw that footage of like Evil Dead 2, we saw Army of Darkness, we saw the original Evil Dead, it was awesome, I loved it, um, so Ash wakes up in a shallow grave with his eyes swollen, so, uh, sewn shut, and he knows that obviously he can't open them, and we don't know why he's opening them, he hears the Brujo say that the key to look inside yourself is to see without sights, and there are a bunch of strangely hooded men and women in dresses attack him, he realizes he needs to just shoot first and ask questions never, the stitches fall from his eyes and his chainsaw hand is attacked, he continues to trip and find his spiritual center, which is Jacksonville, Florida, and I thought this was very interesting, because... You know, we haven't, Ash never got to his happy place. His happy place is in Jacksonville, Florida. And this honestly was pretty meaningful. As, as ridiculous as this was, I really felt for Ash here because, you know, he's always wanted to go to Jacksonville, Florida. He wanted to go there with Linda. They never got to go. And he's always dreamt of going, obviously. And you really see that here. You always see that he really wanted to go. So I really enjoyed seeing that, definitely. So. We realize that he booked a vacation there 30 years ago, but then took, you know, Linda up to the cabin, and his life has never been the same since. He's never gone to go to Jacksonville, Florida. That was their plan, was to go there. So, I love seeing that. So, in the RV, Pablo's robotic hand for Ash is coming along well. Kelly has another pulse through her head and hits the bathroom. She falls to the ground suddenly. When she stands back up, her eyes are solid black, and, uh... We can tell that it's the mental attack demon from last episode. So, yes, Kelly is turning into a deadite, and... It's terrifying. It honestly looks pretty ter terrifying, I, I gotta say. She sees it in the mirror. She comes out and she says she feels much better. Then she electrocutes Pablo, and that was pretty crazy. So, back in his acid trip, Ash is drinking beer, looking at Jacksonville, and his pet lizard starts talking to him and tells him that the answer he seeks is to bury the book deep, deep, deep below where your journey started. And he's like, are you a boy or a girl? I mean, it's a really fucking weird scene, but again, this is an acid trip, and that's what I picture an acid trip to be like, honestly, guys. I it's pretty damn close to what an acid trip I think would be like if we were to see one. So he's in the acid trip. He's picturing what's going on. And then the end of this episode, Kelly comes in sending Brujo out. She walks through the room. The talisman, the talismans go dark. She centers, she enters acid trip and Jacksonville becomes surrender Ash. He's suddenly in a cabin and the demon is there. Ash's lizard tells him to get the demon out. He'll never wake up. The demon takes him back to his stock boy warehouse. In his mind, it's obviously not a stock boy warehouse. He sees creepy dolls again. Ash finally starts 
starts to fight back, realizing he has power because he's in his own mind. But as he's reaching out, he's actually choking Kelly in real life. And Pablo and Brujo come out. Pablo hits him in the back of the head. A couple of the talismans scream. And the demon is still in Kelly. And that's how the episode ends. So I thought that was a really great ending. I definitely really loved it. And a really fun episode overall. I mean, just Ash's, Ash's uh, acid trip is very interesting. I really wonder if he's going to try to go to Jacksonville, Florida. I feel like he really wants to go there. He's never going to get to. If, when this show ends, that's definitely, I think, where we're going to go. I think either Ash is going to die or he's going to go to Jacksonville, Florida. Not trying to say, you know, the ending of the series, but I feel like they're just trying to set up that eventually Ash is going to go there. I really think that, you know, why wouldn't he want to go there after this happens? Um... But how is Kelly going to get out of this? I mean, obviously, she's under this Deadite spell right now. So what's going to happen to her? How does she get out of this? I'm not really sure. We're going to see what happens there. I feel like Pablo is going to try to get her out of this. I'm not really sure how he's going to do it, but there has to be a way, right? I mean, you can't leave her like this forever. There has to be a way to get her out of this. Obviously, there, there, just, there has to. There has to be a way to get her out of this, but they're, they're just not working right now. Um, Amanda and Ruby, I love that they're going to try to find this, you know, basically go after Ash. It's going to be awesome to see. I can't wait to see what happens with that. That is going to be awesome, awesome stuff there. I love that we now know that Ruby is related to the family in Evil Dead 2. I think that's awesome that we found that out. What is going to happen? Does Ash know Ruby? I mean, obviously, he clearly doesn't know her, but what's going to happen? How is that going to all turn out? That's definitely going to be very interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, is Ash going to wake up from his acid trip? Of course, he didn't wake up in this episode. Um, definitely, he did not wake up. We did see that, you know, that they hit him in the back of the head. But what's going to happen here? Definitely, I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen with that. Um, are they going to be able to make Ash a new hand? Obviously, Pablo wanted to. So, let's see if that works out. You can definitely tell that, again, we see a lot of chemistry between Pablo and Kelly in this episode. You definitely see that here. But overall, guys, I really love this episode. A really fun episode overall. Definitely really loved it. Great stuff, as usual. Um, really loving this show, and this episode was no exception, just a really crazy episode, just really weird stuff, and that's what we need in an episode like this, you need really weird stuff, you need really weird imagery, and I think they handled it all very well, it's a very fucked up episode, and that's what I want in the show, I want fucked up stuff, I want a fucked up episode, and that's exactly what I got here, but that is just my review, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you guys saw this episode, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for, I think, Jessica Jones, and I will see you guys for that, okay, bye.